everyone and welcome to the start of a new mini-series in UE4. This episode and the series sorry, is going to be talking about how we do a stat tracking system. So how to make it so we can keep track of various stats that you may have in a game. These could be things like enemies shot or killed, um, coins picked up, times jumped, uh, whatever it may be. Okay, So we're building a system to uh, track all those stats and then you can tie those stats into things like achievements or unlocks, whatever you want to do. You've got total freedom. So the way we're going to do this is we'll be using the, the game instance to keep track of all this stuff because the game instance is persistent, meaning that it is, once it's loaded up at the start, it remains the same act, uh, same in instance of that actor the whole way through the game until the game is shut off. So you can store values in there such as like save data and in this case stat data um, without fear of losing it in level transitions. So what we're going to be doing here is setting up a load of functions which handle that communication to that game instance. But first, let's create that game instance. So I'm going to go to add new blueprint class. And in my all classes box down the bottom here, if you can't see it, just expand open all classes. And you want to search for game instance. And you'll see game instance. Click select to create one. And you want to name it whatever you want. I'm going to call my one my game instance. And now we've got this made, we need to tie it to our game so it uses this when it launches the game. So I'm going to go to Edit, Project Settings. And then on the Maps and Modes section on the left-hand side, click on that. And then right down the bottom, you'll see Game Instance Class. Choose your Game Instance. And then we can close the Settings window. So now it's tied to you at that uh, specific Game Instance, the one you've made. Now we're going to create the stats on our game instance. So I'm going to open this up and we're going to keep track of the stats in the sense of a variable. So I'm going to click on new variable and we're going to call this one stats. And I'm going to go to the right hand side details panel and change the variable type here to string. I'm then going to click on this little capsule next to the string box and change it to the bottom option which is the map option. This turns it into a map uh, type variable. And a map is a, is a way of storing values against another value. So what we call this left-hand value, this left-hand variable, sorry, uh, a uh, key. And then this right-hand column is going to be the value associated to that key. Now, keys have to be unique, uh, but values don't, obviously. Uh, but, so, but the main thing is that keys have to be unique. So it, it suits this quite nicely because we can then, uh, if I compile that, I can do a test here, like a default value. I can add a stat on here. We call this one test stat, and we'll leave it a value of zero. Yeah, but I could have another one in here that could be like jumped, and this could be a value of two, whatever, whatever it may be. And you can have whatever stats you like in this uh, list. Or you can leave the list completely blank and they'll be added as soon as you start earning those stats. The downside to that though is that if you're going to do the UI elements of the stat screen, the, that won't, uh, they won't appear on there because they have no current value. So if you want the UI to show all your stats at the start of the game, even if they're empty, you want to go ahead in here and make a list of all the stats your game is going to have. And this is assuming that all your stats can be uh, associated to a value. It'll, Apologies, we want to make that a float, not an integer. So I'm just going to clear these and change that to a float. There we go. So I've got a string and float. Now, um, if you are using things like um, booleans, you can do a boolean way, but I think float works better because we can still do boolean-like checks and integer-like checks using uh, floats just the same. Okay, so um, we'll leave this as is. Uh, I'll leave it blank for now. And and close that back down. Uh, actually, no. Let's put in my test stat. We'll do a test stat one. We'll add a test stat in here and leave it at zero. There we go. So that's your game instance set up. Now we're going to work on the functions which allow us to muck about with the uh, stats in our game. So for this, I'm going to make a function library. So I'm going to go to add new blueprints and blueprint function library. And a function library is a library of functions that are grouped together and you can use these uh, freely without having to cast them because they don't belong to any particular instance, they belong to the game. So they can be called whenever and wherever. So it comes quite useful. So I'm going to call this one a stat tracker library. 
and open this up. And you can see it's quite bare bones because all it's going to do is have a list of functions that are associated to this library and then we can call them up. You'll see how this works as we get uh, involved in this. So the first function we're going to need is the ability to get hold of our stacks, uh, or get hold of our stat data in our game instance. So I'm going to go get stat. I'm going to go get stats. And get stats is going to be the thing that initializes whatever we need to do to call the stats, be it write to them, read to them, whatever it may be. And what we're going to do in here is get game instance. And that gets the current instance that's running. And then we're going to cast to our particular game instance, one we made. So in this case, it's my game instance. I'm going to plug that in. And then as my game instance, it's going to be outputted through an output return node on our get stats. So click on your purple get stats input uh, in uh, your in node and go to the right hand side and you'll see outputs. We we'll click on new parameters and we're going to call this one in, um, game instance. And the type for this is going to be, in this case, my game instance. You just type in whatever name you've given your game instance. I can put that in there and hook that up like so. Hit compile. So that's the most basic entry uh, function. The next function we're going to add is the add stat function. So I'm going to go add stat, uh, add function, sorry, and call this one add stat. And this one's going to have actually some parameters on it. So with it selected, go to the right hand side details panel and you'll see inputs. I'm going to go new input and the first one we're going to call. Um, stat name and that's going to be a string I'm going to add another one it's going to be value and that's going to be a float as you see these match up to that map we made in a game instance which is quite important okay so we've got add stat there um, what we're going to do now is call our get stats function which we made just recently drag that out and plug that in so it gets hold of the stats, the game instance, which we need. And then from there, we can get the stats variable, which is the map here. Now with this map here, we can do a simple find node. Now a find node works in a way that it's going to look for all the keys associated to that variable. So the stats variable, it's going to search for this key that we input here in a second. And if it finds it, it's going to output true. Obviously, if it doesn't, it can output false. And it also outputs the value that it finds. So let's try getting our stat name, which you can either drag through there like so, or you can just right click and search for stat name and you'll see it there too. Either way, doesn't matter. Okay, so once you've got that, we're then going to drag the boolean here into a branch. And we're going to use this branch to determine whether or not the stat already exists in that uh, stat tracker. If it does exist, we're going to add to the current value that's in there. So let's um, go from the stats variable here again and go, well, actually, it might be a bit nicer. So if we do this out here, uh, no, we won't actually. We'll carry on. We'll drag this out over here and do add. So if it's true, it's going to add uh, the stat name. So drag out here stat name and we're going to add the value to the current value that we've got here so I'm going to right click and type in value and it'd be right at the bottom get value and that responds to our parameter over here and then I'm going to add a float that to float and it's going to add this find value to it and that's then going to go into the final add so what this is doing is it's going to find a key inside the map and if it already finds it, it's going to override it with this new value. So it's going to override it with the current value, which is here, and with the addition of the new value. So if it already had the value of 2 and we're adding another 1 to it, it's going to add and change it to 3. If it's false, i.e. the stat doesn't exist in that list already, then we're going to drag down here and do the add again. So from stats here, we're going to do add and this one's a bit simpler because we don't have to add any pre-existing values to it we're going to do stat name and then just do value 
like so. And that's it. So, on that stat, we first of all get in the stats, which belong to the game instance. Once we've got that, we look at the variable that's on there. And if the stat name already exists on that list, then it's going to add to the pre-existing value before setting it back through the add. If it's false, i.e. this stat doesn't exist on the stat tracker, then we're going to add a whole new stat to it with a new value. And that's all there is to this function. Hit compile, and we're done here. Then the last function we're going to add to this for now is going to be a read stat. So we add a new function to the list on the left hand side, and we we'll call this one read stat. And the read stat is going to have one input, and it's going to be the stat name. And this function is going to be used by the, uh, the designer if they want to read what the value currently is in the stat uh, on the uh, stat values. So we need a stat name. And then we need to do the get stats, which we need to do at the start of all these functions. And on the game instance here, we're going to get stats, which is that map we made at the start. With the map there, we can then do a simple find. And the find, it needs the stat name as the parameter. And we're going to output the value that we found. So I'm going to click on my starting node, go to outputs and add a new output. And we're going to change, change the name of the output value here to value. And then the type to float. And that's quite simply all it's going to do is plug in like so. Perfect. So we've got three functions here. We've got get stats, add stats, and read stat. You may have other ones you may want to do, um, but anything stat related you can put in this library and just fine. So that'll do for us for now. We can close this. And now we're going to actually do some uh, tests on this. So what I'm going to do is go into my first person character here, and we're going to find where they jump. Okay, so when I jump, um, I'm going to, from jump, and it's as simple as this, I'm just going to do add stat. And all it's requiring is the stat name and the value. Now, I can do this to test stat that's already in there, or I can add a new stat to this. So I can show you the new stat. I can go, call it jump, call it jumped, and change the value to 1. So this is going to keep track of how many times the player jumps in the game. So do add stat. Now, I'm going to read that stat so I can see, test if it's working. So I'm just going to do an F key input. And I'm going to simply go read stat. Again, we need a stat name. Make sure it matches the same capitals and all. Jumped. And all I'm going to do is take the print string, the value. Hit compile. And let's test this out. So. I can jump once, jump twice, push F, and you see, I've got two. Jump again, push F, now three. And I can keep track of all the times I jump, and I can always check with the F key. Like so. And we can do that again to anything we like. So I say I've got shooting here, so I can just add it to shooting here. Let's go add stat. Shots fired. Value one. There you go. And maybe I want to when I will push F. I want to read shots fired. So shots fired. So now when I push F, it's going to read that stat instead. Seven. Thirteen. Twenty-eight. And you get the idea. So you can keep adding stats to your game. So we can go ahead and add stats to any kind of thing we like to do. And that's kind of it. In the next episode, we're going to go through the user interface element of this and how you can make it so you can actually read the stats in-game. 
um, and visually as well. So if you want to join us for the next episode, you can join us early before anyone else over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Bailey. For just one dollar, you can access to that video, plus many other videos on there too. Big thank you to all of my patrons for their support. And if you have any questions or if you want to know how to keep track of certain t uh, particular types of stats you don't know how to do, leave a comment below. It'll be fascinating to see what kind of things you want to do. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you sort of hit that subscribe button. And that's it from me. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.